Jay, thank you. Tomorrow marks 50 years since Apollo 11 landed on the moon and sparked the imagination of countless people worldwide. Yeah, these images of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin taking those first steps on the moon, these have just been forever etched into history. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So you can commemorate the milestone this weekend in Kansas City. Science City is hosting an Apollo Day tomorrow. How about that? Movies, special exhibits, even a guest speaker from NASA. Ugh. We'll give you a complete look at what it took to make the moon landing possible. 41 Action News reporter Charlie Keegan is at Science City this morning with the highlights of tomorrow's event. So many cool artifacts around yeah. you too. Exactly right. That's where we're going to talk to you about right now, Lindsay, some of the artifacts related to the Apollo missions that will be on display for you to check out today and especially tomorrow during the Apollo Day events. Jeff Rosenblatt is the planetarium director here, and he's the guy to talk to when it comes to all things space. So, Jeff, tell us some about the artifacts, particularly the space suit that we have here. Yeah, we've got a lot of cool stuff. This is really one of the coolest ones we have. This is an in-flight uh, space jacket that uh, Neil Armstrong wore during trainings for the Apollo missions. Um, it's this really cool piece. You can see the NASA meatball logo on the left-hand side. Um, and it was created, uh, had this Teflon material, basically kind of a first time they used this. So it's a very slippery type of fabric. Okay. Kind of let them get in and out of their spacesuits uh, pretty easily. Very nice. So this he used in training, but this suit itself did not go into space, right? Correct. Not in space, but he did wear it. Um, I got all jittery and stuff when we opened it out of the box and we're putting it in the case. It's just a cool, cool piece of history. That's awesome. And let's move down the line then, Jeff, because we mm -hmm. have another piece of history here that you got to take out of the box uh, from the Cosmosphere down in Hutchinson. Yes. We're going to lent these to you for the weekend. What is this? Uh, this is called the sleep restraint uh, bag. So uh, when they would go to sleep at night, they'd zip up in here and it had Velcro straps on the back so they'd uh, uh, tether themselves inside the cabin so they wouldn't find themselves floating around in strange places in the morning. So it, right. it kept them tethered. It was the first time they used this on the Apollo missions, um, and it's a similar thing they use today yeah. on the International Space Station and on the space shuttle and all other sort of spacecraft. Wow. Yeah. So it was kind of 50 years ago, kind of blazing the trail for what they still use in space to this day. Now, if you want to come check all this out for yourself, there's all sorts of events. Uh, they'll have movies at the planetarium, a guest speaker tomorrow at 830 from NASA, all sorts of cool things to check out. $5 to come see that speaker, and then you can get a combo ticket for Science City and oh. uh, for a planetarium movie, all for $15. So, oh. so much to take in this uh, Saturday here at Union Station. That jacket, that's pretty cool. Well, and you're so much more like thinking Dirty about these kind of things because no, I was like, it'd be cool to float around sleeping. And she said, you'd bump into buttons and crash the spaceship. You can't Duh, do that. Right? So I, I never, never, <laughs> I couldn't have been an astronaut. I never would have thought of that. Right. I mean, you, but you got to be careful out there, Taylor, because you don't know what you could bump into if that's you're true. in zero gravity it's sleeping in space. So you got to Velcro yourself down, man. <laughs> Richard Sharp called it. He goes, that looks like a baby yes. swaddle. Yes, it does, Richard. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Really